Hello, uh, welcome everyone. I think this is running okay. I'm just going to do my usual boring opening and introduction by um, dropping worksheets in the description. Worksheets that people definitely, obviously use. Uh, now, because I'm a bit lazy today and I've not set myself up properly, I'm actually going to put into the description a completed worksheet. So those of you who've been taking uh, downloading the worksheets and uh, filling them in dutifully. You can still do that if you want, but uh, basically I'm going to put in today all the information that I'll be referring to through this video. Alright, so uh, let me just get that set up while I stand around in this uh, this pub. Uh, there must be a... Oh, I say it every time, don't I? There's got to be a better way of doing this, but for today it's absolutely fine. We can We can... We'll get going and then we'll worry about getting good, won't we? So, that should be up and running in there. And then, I'll drop it in the comments as well. So, if you want to download this, you can. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, so this is the one. Pin message, a perfecto. So, um, I've just got one more little job. One more little job. And then we can we can do some history, which is what everyone tunes in for, isn't it? Of course. So, right. Excellent. Right. Save. Ah, oh, I don't know how these pro streamers do it, guys. I don't know how they do it, but I'm gonna learn. Oh, someone's got a test tomorrow. Now this. This is where this could be good, isn't it? Now, we're not doing Weimar Nazi Germany today, I'm afraid. We're going to be doing modern England. So we're going to be doing from 1900 to the present day, because this is actually a GCSE topic for crime and punishment. Now, you'll notice I've chosen... Like, on this, this game, by the way, is called Watch Dogs Legion. Um, I have never played it, apart from playing the tutorial that got me to this uh, stage. Uh, so don't know what's in it. Um, the, I've taken the subs off. I've taken the blood effects off to, to you know, to protect you all. Um, but um, there, there is, there are guns and there is shooting. So I imagine some of the missions might involve some of that, just as a, as a health warning. Um, I've chosen the person because you could choose the people you start with, who I think looks most like what I will look like in, uh, I'd like to say, 40 years or 30 years, but probably more in like five years. So that's what I've gone for here. Um, so. Uh, we're in a pub, as you can see, look, football and lager, that's what, uh, football on the screen <laughs> and lager in your spleen. But what's a spleen? This is obviously a quintessential British pub. Uh, this game is all about hacking, so in theory I can hack this person's phone. Uh, while they're playing darts. Although I don't know how I'm supposed to do it. Uh, we'll work it out. So, um, general story, just so you know what's going on. Uh, Parliament was blown up, actually, in the first part of the game. Um, and we're part of some hacking group, I think. Uh, it's called Dead Sec. I mean, people will know more than me. Uh, but the important thing about this game that's useful for us is it is set in modern day London. Hello. So just check in. Hello, everyone. Yes, hello, hello, hello. Um, we're set in modern day London, or technically speaking, I think about 2030, so a little bit more advanced, which is actually pretty useful and topical for us because there's a lot of focus on AI in this game. So we'll have a we can have a little chat about it. Uh, AI later. Income to history GCSE because history is bad. Oh no, heartbreak hotel. Um, I disagree. Obviously, I would. I'm I'm officially paid to disagree with that. But uh, for now, we're fine. Uh, now the good thing is, being in modern day London or a futuristic version, but a fairly detailed version of London, is we can go and have a look around to see if they've got things. I can't get into this car. Maybe I'll have to take someone else's. Uh, is this a sprint button? Yeah, there we go. Um, it's relatively detailed. I had a little drive around, so I did the tutorial and I drove around a little bit and I found Chinatown and it was pretty much... it was almost exactly the same as when I walked around Chinatown a few weeks ago. Uh, so that was pretty decent, to be fair. It is Watch Dogs. Jacob, it is. Hello, hello Ryan. Nice to see you. <laughs> Uh, so basically what we're going to do is we've got our four key questions uh, regarding crime and punishment, who makes the law, what types of crime are prominent, how is the law enforced and how are criminals punished and we'll just spend some time talking through each question. If you have questions I'll keep an eye on the comments and I'll come to them as quickly and as often as I can. Uh, hopefully we can keep them tied in with what we're actually uh, 
talking about at the time, the more relevant they are, the easier it'll be. But if you've got questions about anything, then we uh, we can plug it. Um, but before we start, I'm just checking how much we've got. Ten people. This is very exciting. Thank you guys for for joining in. Um, so far. Um, and you're not very late. I was late, actually. Apologies. Not that anybody's kind of clocking this. How do you get into a card? Does anybody know the button to get into a card? You would think. It seems like it says triangle at the top. It would just be triangle. I can't get into any of these. I just want to roam around. Anybody know? Does anybody know? Because that would be wicked if someone could tell me. Now, these are new. These, obviously. You don't have these things in London yet. These holograms. Maybe they're around the corner, eh? Uh... Right, while I'm running around trying to find out what to do to get into a car, hold down. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do, Ahmed. I'm trying to hold down. Show my age here. This is why I am a younger version of the man you can see on the screen. So hold down triangle. Yeah, I am. Am I on the wrong side? No, it's not even that. Brilliant. Well, this is a good start, isn't it? I get into this car. Am I meant to hack it? Oh, hang on. Oh, it's uh, one of them. Well, we can at least have a little roll around. Maybe we have to steal someone's car. Maybe we can see the police and law enforcement in action. Or some drones, but they're like... Uh, well, we'll make a start. So, first question that we always consider uh, on these streams when we're thinking about crime punishment... Oh, stop there, mate. Right. Can I have this, please? I wonder. Steal. Right, I'm sorry, right? Whoever's developed this game, this is a real error. Maybe we can go on the underground instead. Um... Who's in charge in modern day England? Well, the law is made in modern day England by uh, Parliament. Uh, when we started by looking at medieval England, we considered how... I wonder if... I, I'll just have a look on the map. Maybe I've got... Whole triangle beside a vehicle. I'm being trolled by this game. Whole triangle beside a vehicle to get in. Oh, I can now. There we go. We've got a little purple van. So when we started this series, the people who... <laughs> Sir, play GTA. Do you know what's funny? Um... The only other game I could think of to try and show the you know modern day policing was GTA, but I decided that it was uh, maybe a stretch too far. Although, I'd like a bike, if I can get a bike, that'd be good. Um, so we're not going to be playing GTA uh, yet on this channel, especially not yet, uh, not today. So we'll, we'll stick with this one, especially because this is based in England. This is perfect for us. So uh, modern day England, Parliament are in charge. When we started this stream, uh, the king was in charge. Sorry, mate, I need this, because I want to have a look, better look around than in that purple van. Oh, no. That. Okay. Uh, so, nowadays, if a law is introduced that introduces a new crime, it will be introduced um, as a new piece of legislation or law within Parliament. It will be forwarded, usually, firstly, in the House of Commons, uh, backed up by the House of Lords, and then the King, the King now, uh, Charles III, their job is basically to sign it off. Now, in theory, they have more power, the King, in terms of blocking or slowing down legislation, but they very rarely use it in modern day England. So um, we've had a huge shift in terms of who's in charge since when we started this course or started this stream a thousand years ago. Um, and as you can imagine, the types of crime, even though some have remained, like theft and assault and murder and whatever, uh, the types of crime have also changed quite dramatically also. Um, and that reflects an increased focus on people's identity actually and people pay more attention to people's identity and people as individuals so who's in charge now parliament mainly this is is this trafalgar square look in trafalgar square guys i think it's but yeah it's supposed to be they've taken the lions down no they haven't there they are look oh this stuff here right your constituents are dying abolish the police state whoa this is more relevant than i realized look so um, in the game someone's taken over london um like, I don't even know who it is. I think they're called Albion, but I don't know what they represent. They're a bunch of uh, bad guys, right? Let's just say that. Uh, no freedom, no future. Look, people are very upset about the police state in a futuristic version of London. Illegal acts will be prosecuted. Well, you would hope so. Although, as we've decided uh, and discussed before, an illegal act is basically dictated by the government, by the parliament, in this case, in, in modern day England, isn't it? So... Who knows what an illegal act is in this current version of England. This is pretty realistic. Look, here we go. This is the National Gallery. Was there a few weeks ago? Well, probably a few months ago. Oh, they've shut it down. Shame. A lot of paintings in there. It's not, it's not bad. It's worth a visit. Uh, so, just before we go on to question two, I'll have a quick scan for comments. So, uh, it's Watch Dogs. It is Watch Dogs. Legion, specifically. Um, I haven't seen this before yet. I hadn't seen it before I saw this game, actually. I can open a fake car. 
This is major progress for me. Um, I think it should be a proportional government like Weimar Germany, but it should be changed slightly so people don't rebel and take over the government. Yeah, one of the big questions about how to run a country and how to have a system of government or a law system that works is thinking about how do you make sure people have enough freedom that they can live their lives, but also that people can't do whatever they want? That's the, that's the real challenge, isn't it, in terms of running a country? I don't know what going through that checkpoint means. Um, now, if I remember, there's Gordon Ramsay Street Burger should be around here, because we went there before we went to Trafalgar Square, and I'm doubting very much that it'll be. Ah, you see, this is where you see the details slip in. This, this isn't what it looks like on the way down from this angle, but whatever. Who am I? I'm just a streamer. I'm just a YouTuber, guys. That's what, uh, my full identity now. Full-on YouTuber. Uh, oh, Jamiroquai is on the radio. Excellent. Uh, very British. So, who's in charge? It's Parliament. If you've got questions about that, excellent. We're going to move on in a moment. Oops, sorry, mate. To uh, what types of crime are prominent. Um, and once we've done that, we might even try one of these. Oh, that was... That's nicer than what we got. I wonder if we can have this one. Yeah, we'll have this. Uh, now we're talking. Um, so, what types of crime are prominent? Hang on a sec. Mr. J, a history teacher, a streamer, and a video game tour guide. Yeah, maybe I could get into the tour guide business on video games. Maybe there's something in it. Cost of living crisis. Maybe this is how I should... Uh, maybe this is the way forward. After law in England... After law and order in England, you should play Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It's got Greek mythology. Well, that's on the, that's on the list, actually, Jacob. I'll be playing that soon. Um... Okay, quality. Yeah, we'll we'll do that eventually. So, um, what we're going to do in terms of cr prominent crimes, we're going to focus on those types of crime or changes in the law regarding crime that are probably the clearest, um, most clearly distinguished from what had been before, if that makes sense. So, um, as I mentioned, a lot of what people refer to in terms of crime. Uh, in modern day England in terms of changes with regard to law and order often revolve around people's identity uh, so uh, a big big shift for instance uh, in terms of people's identity and behavior and belief systems in terms of the law was that um, previously before 1967 it was illegal to be a homosexual in 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 Britain or, or technically speaking uh, homosexual activity or behaviour was actually illegal in England until 1967 when this was decriminalised in a period in the 60s when more liberal ideas were introduced uh, regarding people's attitudes towards sexual relations or people's attitudes towards romantic relationships generally um, there, were, there were all sorts of changes introduced in the 60s and that would be a good example of something that was illegal and then almost, you know, over well Technically speaking, it's always going to be overnight. But in a big shift in terms of the law, a behaviour or action in terms of someone's personal life that had previously been outlawed was now absolutely fine. Uh, so, so that's a good example of, of, of a big shift. Um, th there are some others. Um, there's also been an increased focus, especially more recently, on, on the idea of hate crime. So these are crimes that are not just... They don't just involve, say, assault, but they involve assault based on somebody's hatred or perceived hatred towards a particular group. So you'll get, say, um, homophobic crime would be an example, race-based crime would be an example. Um, and, and it's a little bit, I'll be honest, it's a bit of a tricky square to circle, if that's the right phrase, in lots of ways. Because if you look at the legislation in place about hate crime, about race-based crime or uh, homophobic crime, a lot of the time, the person who decides whether a crime has been committed, in some instances, is actually the, pers the victim themselves. So if someone is assaulted, um, or has something stolen from them, and that person perceives or believes that they were assaulted or had the thing stolen from them on the basis of them having or possessing a protected characteristic, whether that's their skin colour, whether that's their sexuality or gender identity, uh, that then could be elevated or escalated to being seen as a hate crime. So some people um, may feel that they've been targeted, and you know, some people undeniably will be, will be targeted on the back of this following this drone will be targeted by uh, individuals or targeted in certain ways um, on the basis of some people maybe having hatred towards a particular group but that does make it very messy in the court of law to kind of prove the reasoning or the thought process of the criminal in particular uh, so, so that's a, a pretty big shift over recent years uh, there's been a big change with regard to, to people's taking of drugs there was uh, the 1971 Misuse of Drugs Act uh, made the use of all sorts of what was seen to be dangerous drugs illegal, although people's attitudes in some ways are shifting 
and lots of people are now seeing drug use more as a disease or, or an illness as opposed to a criminal behaviour. Uh, but as you can see, like, as, you know, as I'm talking about this, lots of these things about sexual identity, about race, about people's individual decisions about their lives, these were not on the radar of the police or the government for almost the entirety of the course that we have looked at. Um, so, so that represents you know, a real shift in terms of how people have perceived crime. And in terms of different crimes, I mean, you, you guys will know already, the fact that we're doing this on PlayStation Online is a good example of this. Uh, not of a crime, but of, uh, of changes in technology. New technology has really changed how crime has been uh, overseen and how people involve themselves in criminal activity. For instance, stealing often used to be you had to be in the physical vicinity of someone to steal from them. Nowadays, people can steal on their phones, they can steal on computers, cybercrime is a real problem, cybersecurity is a real issue. These things are... The theft itself isn't new, but the way it's conducted is pretty new. We've actually ended up exactly where we started. Now, I want to see... Let's have a look at the map. Uh, we'll see... Oh, I've got, to, I've got to explore it, it seems. Well, should we head over here and see? Locate the safe house entrance. Right, we'll, we'll put the multitask into test and see if we can find out where we're supposed to be going, shall we? Um, so yeah, so those are some of the changes with regard to crime. I mean, there are others we could touch on, but I think we can leave it there. So I'll leave, uh, I'll leave it 30 seconds. I'll have a look in the comments, and we'll see. If <laughs> just having a look in the comments. Because um, <laughs> I've not had a look. I've been driving around like a lemon. So um, we'll have a look. And uh, what we're going to do is um, we'll have a little drive around London. I'll have a look at the comments, and then we're going to do some cultural capital learning here. We're going to learn some extra stuff, not just history today. Oh, here's Chinatown, look. Right, now, if uh, there's a wicked sushi bar in real life, not far from here. Right, let's think. Uh, it's down in Soho, technically, but it's very close. So, I think... Oh, yeah, it's down here. Right, let's see if they've actually got the sushi bar. If you come in real life, this street, as it happens, sheer coincidence, is I think this one is called Dean Street. About... Here, IRL, which of course means in real life, I'm proper on top of this, there's like a, a really good sushi bar, it's all you can eat, and um, he's not skimpy on the sashimi, he chucks it in, sincerely. So um, if you're ever in London and you need to go and get some sushi, about these buildings here, that's where you need to be, alright? Right, let's see if we've got any questions. When was Parliament established? Oh, crikey. That's a good one. I mean, Parliament as an idea is established over a long period of time. Um, it comes to its own, really, under the rule of Henry VIII, when the split from Rome, the split with the Catholic Church, means Henry needs to find a legitimate way of passing law, so he uses Parliament to do that, or at least his Chief Minister Thomas Cromwell does. And then under the Stuarts, Charles I, Parliament actually rules the country entirely on its own. Uh, I touched on that, I think, in um, the early modern England uh, stream, if you want more on that. Um, and then it's basically a little bit of a dance between the King or Queen and Parliament uh, from that point in the 17th century to the present day. Uh, so it wasn't legal to be gay, just to... D yeah, I think that's a good way of putting it. Uh, because it's worth saying, the government, as, although it does try to get involved in a lot, it's in terms of what people actually feel like they are in terms of their identity, it's very difficult to enforce the law with regard to crime. So it would be very difficult you know, nigh on impossible for the government to say it is illegal to be, you know, quote-unquote gay. Um, but it's the actual activity people undertake that the government is mainly interested in. Um, <laughs> Mystery moderator is, is having a scream over here. Um, yeah, I've got moderators now. I'm proper onto this, guys. Oh, I've said I'm proper onto this. The moderator's proper onto this, so... Dean Street, yeah, very funny. Uh, was knife crime still a big problem? Yeah, um, it is definitely today. Um, yeah, that's it. Oh, man, you've got the topic exactly. That's what we're looking at. What, 1900 to basically the present day, um, and every single year that passes, you know, we just keep it at the present day until they update the course. Um, so what we're going to do, guys, I'm going to teach you something now. I'm um, hopefully I've taught you some other stuff, but this one's proper good. Um, I'm just checking. We've, we've got about we're, we're hovering between about ten or so people live, which is great. Um, so it would be a good time for me to mention, and I should have done this already. Today's sponsor. I've actually got a sponsor today, guys. Um, if you like roast dinners, right? If you love a Sunday dinner, then you should love Toby Carvery, right? Now I'm not being sponsored by Toby Carvery, sadly yet, but I've gone potentially even a step better. 
Today's video is being sponsored by an Instagram account called Tobey Carvery. Tobey Carvery, yeah? Uh, and Tobey Carvery is uh, an Instagram account with a friend, set up by a friend, who basically rates Toby Carveries across the country. Now, our local Toby Harvery uh, is in Hindham, and it's all right. I don't know. I should have checked. I should have done my homework. I don't know what rating they were given by Toby Carvery, but if you are, if you've ever thought, I wonder what the best Toby Carvery in the country is, you need to head over to Instagram and you need to check out Tobey Carvery. T-O-B-A-E. I think it's underscore Carvery. And you need to follow or whatever you do on Instagram or like or whatever. Because if you do, then good things will happen for us too, all right? Good things on this channel. Uh, and then also, you know, would be remiss of me to mention, if you've not already liked and all the rest, that's super important. Because, um, as I mentioned yesterday, my mystery moderator from yesterday is due 1% of whatever I earn from this channel. And today's mystery moderator has made a different request. And if I'm going to make it good, if I'm going to come good on my promises, I'm going to need some more subs, guys. Even though we're in a really good place, we need to we need to share the love so that my uh, moderators can get what they need. Oh, careful. Okay, right. So that's, um, that's enough of that. Right. Are you being paid, sir? You have to be paid for it to be a proper sponsor. A pretty cool account. Yeah, it's a very good idea for an Instagram account. I'm not being paid in money, but, you know, payment can come in a variety of ways. And what I'm hoping is we'll get a plug by Tobey Carvery. That's the plan, right? That's, uh, you know, we're, we're going to share it out. But also, it's funny because um, the, the friend who runs Tobey Carvery is also good fun. So it's also worth a check anyway. Um, now, what I'm going to do, we're going to head over and see if we can find the safe house. But I wanted to give you some, some real-life working wisdom today, guys, because I've been doing some homework on uh, different forms of slang often used in and around London, okay? And I'm very aware that the use of the word slang is itself quite dated. Let's see if I can find this marker. But I thought, I learned something this week, and it, and it blew my mind, yeah? It blew my mind. Um, I want to say what a roadman is, okay? I found out this week what a roadman actually is. A roadman, I, you know, assumed it was just linked solely to young men in London. It's not, right? A roadman is a young man in London, admittedly, probably between about, you know, I think about 15 to 30, technically, I could probably jump on the roadman wagon still. Uh, I'm just about within the, uh, the, the parameters. But a roadman is someone who knows an area very, very, very well. Right? That's what a roadman is. So it's a young man in London generally, not always, but generally, who knows London super well. So if you think about your, the general stereotype of a roadman, we need to extend this, in my opinion, to delivery drivers and Uber drivers and people who, and, and taxi drivers, people who know London extremely well. Because the, the aim, obviously, is, is, on this channel is, is for us to know history very well. So we want to be roadmen of history in, in, in a strange sense, don't we? Even though we're, we may not just be uh, young men. So, there's a little bit of, of relevant knowledge for you whilst we're in. Look, there we go. There's, uh, that's supposed to be Big Ben, I guess. Whilst we're in London, how about that? I've got some more later, right? Later on, um, I'm going to tell you what brazy means. Because I found this out the other day, and that was mad. When I found out what brazy means, or brazy meant, or whatever the correct terminology is for brazy, that was very exciting. So, so you can... Uh, Look forward to that at the end. I'll tell you what brazy means too. So let's head up in here. Oh, we're in another pub. And uh, hold L1 on a locked object. Well, I'm hacking now. Right, rotate the n oh, rotate the nodes to complete the circuit to solve. It. Oh, that's the thing on the board. Right, how do I rotate then? Uh, right. Do you know what I mean? Like this is not good when you're trying to disable. Oh, I push it. It's a press, not a hold. Oh, brilliant puzzle this is. So, use L1 to rotate nodes. Complete the circuit to solve the puzzle. No one's got no ideas of what I'm supposed to... Oh, I... Oh, do you, you see? <sighs> Why, in it? Why? Right, here we go. That's gone blue. Unlock. That's gone blue. Right, hang on. I imagine modern day hacking is just like this. I'm going to get into my coding. I'm going to learn Python and um, whatever other codes people learn. Right, here we go. Right, nearly there. Nah, in the grand scheme of things, that was all right, wasn't it? We're not going to complain about that. So, open. Complete the network. But oh, that one. Oh, interesting. So, uh, now we can get in, and hopefully it'll give us something fun to do.
instead of me just driving around. Respect the tech, definitely. Due to physical violence, oh, something's been cancelled. Sad times. Oh, okay, right. Oh, here we go. Secret compartment in the radio, yeah, seemingly. Right, let's have a quick check whilst this is loading up. Uh, hello, hello. <laughs> Good question, Mirage. Okay, right, let's have a look. Historical Roadman, interesting, definitely. I think it could catch on. If I ever get caught with this name, History Hack, that's what I'm switching to. I should buy up some, do some domains, really. Does a roadman have to be good at navigating London or just big cities in L England? That's an excellent question, Mirage. Um, I think officially it has to be London, but hopefully we can be a bit more inclusive going forward, and that'll change, hopefully. Okay, right, and there's no other questions, so I'm going to get rid of this. Okay. So, uh, we're in the subway now. Oh, a bit creepy. So, what we're going to do, um, whilst we kind of work out what's going here, we're going to have a little thing about how the law is enforced. Now, I didn't actually see any police officers out and about when we were driving, and that's probably because the story of the game revolves around a different form of police than what we're used to. Uh, now, policing has changed massively since the year 1900. Yesterday's stream, or the last stream I did, was all about Whitechapel and Jack the Ripper, and it was all about how the police operated uh, at the time of Jack the Ripper. Um, they were v hampered in their um, investigation into who the Whitechapel murderer was, purely because they just didn't have the technology or the scientific investigative me methods to track DNA, to track blood samples and all the rest. So they were always going to find it extremely hard to find out who the Whitechapel murderer was. Uh, they, they interviewed witnesses, they um, picked up clues from the crime scene, um, they did what they could, but it was really tricky for them to... Uh, they wouldn't have been able uh, to do what an, you know a modern-day police officer would do in the circumstance to try and investigate a murder like that. So, uh, power up the safe house. Let's see, it's probably some... Oh. These sort of missions, yeah, when it's like, right, we'll give you some information, but first of all, you've got to run to the end of a corridor and probably climb up something, are boring, right? They are... Oh, see? Exactly. Not run to the corridor. I've got a challenge. Oh, great. Run up the stairs and then hit a button and go from there. Interact. Brilliant. Um, so, the, so policing has changed massively. Um, in part, it's because of scientific developments that have taken place. So, uh, for example, in 1901, um, fingerprinting or the use of fingerprint technology was discovered and the fact that everyone has a unique thumbprint and that if someone's thumbprint is found at uh, a crime scene, you can tie someone directly to either a weapon or, or something involved in a particular crime being committed. That was a big, big deal. And in the same year as it happens, blood samples, um, or blood types, were discovered. Uh, and the police started using these almost immediately. So immediately, like really early on, I think about 1900 or so, the crossover from the 18th into the 19th... Um, sorry, the 19th into the 20th century, police start using phone lines to better improve communications. They then start using uh, fingerprint technology, they start using blood samples at crime scenes. That's all really useful stuff. Um, although, having said that, it's not until 1988 that someone is actually... Oh, play, whatever. Um, it's going to give me something to do. Information's being collected. This is like, this game is real life. It's all about social media companies seemingly collecting our data. I'm going to sell them. That's what's going to happen. Um, well, I'll just check the, the, the comments quickly. Um, oh, we got some. S <laughs> I should set up a separate account for historical slang explanations. Don't worry, I'm going to give some more later. Stop spamming. If someone's spamming, please, please stop. Spamming is annoying. It makes it hard for us to see what's going on. Um, Okay, did police change? Yeah, definitely. So we'll get back to it uh, whilst they're explaining whatever it is I'm supposed to probably be listening to to find out what's going on. Uh, so they start using DNA sampling, at least in the form of, well, let me be clear, really technical. Fingerprint branch, the fingerprinting branch is established in 1901. Blood types and their use uh, and their usefulness is discovered in the same year. The police start using that almost immediately, or at least they start introducing this in 1901. The investigation or the kind of experiment that proved these things would be done just before. Um, but it's not until 1988 that the first person is convicted solely on the linking of DNA from a crime scene to a particular individual's DNA. Uh, in part, that's because, oh, is it 1953? 
I think it's 1953, it might be 1963, that Harold and Crick discover uh, the double helix and, and the genetic code and DNA and all the rest. Maybe someone can fact check that for me when Harold and Crick um, make their big discovery. That really changes how... Um, Okay, right, they've given me something. That really changes how the police go about investigating crime. Because remember, up until the point of the 19th century, really, but definitely by the time we get to the 20th century, the police are not just interested in stopping crime by physically being present to stop people robbing each other, like in breaking up fights. They get more and more involved in the detective work, the investigation work, the trying to find out who's committed a crime after the crime has been committed sort of work. Uh, in the 30s, in the 1930s, they start using police cars, kind of standard issue, that, that's super important. That really changes things. Um, computers are introduced in the 60s in terms of ad administration for police work. That's a really big deal. It makes everything quicker. I mean, it's lost on us almost certainly now how useful computers are for storing information, sharing information. Um, something called the PNC, the Police National Computer, is introduced in 1980, where you can access information about various people all at once so if you've got the name and address or maybe the date of birth of a person and you want to see if they've been arrested elsewhere then you now can do that from 1980 and that that really changes police work because it turned out you know this may be one of the reasons that jack the ripper maybe escaped it's it's almost certainly definitely is one of the reasons that someone called the yorkshire ripper peter sutcliffe who murdered people in yorkshire i think in the 70s escaped justice for as long as he did is because Crimes were happening in different areas and different boroughs and different councils, say, but different areas weren't able to connect the dots as to who had committed what crime or who had been interviewed or questioned for a certain crime in different areas. So that, that was a big, big deal. Um, and, th and the use of technology, I mean, I mentioned cars, and, and I guess scientific discoveries fall into that category to a certain extent, but the use of CCTV, the use of... Um, Speed cameras, like breathalysers, these sorts of things, that really makes policing easier because there's a, an objective form of evidence, say, that someone has been committing a crime. You're not relying on witness statements about whether someone's robbed from a shop if you've got CCTV that shows someone robbing from a shop. So that just makes the police's work a little bit easier. It makes finding convic you know, securing convictions in court a little bit easier. It really changes how the police go about their business. Right, I've got some upgrades. Let's have a look before we talk any more about the police. Right, tech points. Well, I imagine I can spend those and get things. I can get some fun outfits or whatever. So this will be my base, I'm guessing. Right, fair enough. Uh, now, I was going to head over here as if I was about to listen to what the thing was going to tell me. That's one thing I am finding when I'm streaming like this, is I just don't pay any attention to what's going on. Probably for the best, because... Probably. Well, who knows? It's probably much more interesting than what I'm talking about, let's be honest. Uh, pardon, have you seen our region about... Nope. Right. We're going to get out and see. Oh, first of all, we're going to spend our points. Right. Camouflage. Invisible. Well, that's very realistic. A drone. Yes. Oh, I've not got enough points, guys. A spider bot. or a, I'll go Invisibility it is, and we'll go with that. Uh, quip and you catch it in your... Alright, oh, let's, um... This is how games start, isn't it? This is the difficulty you have, is is finding out all how all these things work. And then once you've got it up and running, you know, it is fun, and then you can get the points and all the rest, I get it, but... Right, I don't know if I even... I don't think I allocated that properly, but we'll, we'll, we'll survive. Just want to get out now and have a look around. See if we can find something that we recognise in London. It's not going to let me out. Is it this door? Anybody know? Anybody played this? Anybody know how we're uh, allocating points here? It's probably this, is it? No, something new, but... I'm stuck, guys. Let me have a look. Anybody know? Uh, is there a popular movie on Mondays? Yeah, there's a few. There's actually some pretty famous modern day serial killers that kind of link. Um, those mannequins are pretty scary, to be fair. Um, tech. It's got to be in tech. Right. Oh, no, that's where I just bought it. Oh, equip operatives with the new gear in the team menu. Right, this is the team menu. Aha! Right, here we go. Oh, that's to be fair, right? This is. Oh, these are the three people I chose, by the way, at the start of the game. So, um, this was the future version of me. Um, hang on, get in there, you. Yeah, equipped. Uh, 
Uh, this is uh, S S Tracy. You had a really expensive car, which I thought might be useful. Uh, and this is a guy called Bobby, who works in a children's hospital overseas. Not sure why I picked Bobby. Maybe he does something for health. Who knows? Uh, so yeah, we'll track that and we'll we'll get going. It'll tell me what to do. And we'll go from there. Uh, so. I'll have a quick scan. Any questions? When was Jack Ripper born? Well, we don't know who he was, so we don't know. Um, the thought is that he was about 30 some eyewitnesses, people who claim, actually, that, that you know they'd seen Jack the Ripper, um, claimed he was about 30. The murders take place in 1888. I'm not a maths teacher, but what's that? 1850-something. Okay, roundabout, if, if that is true. Would it not be the one the two lags who kidnapped Charlotte London and Sally ended his life in Liverpool? Yeah, um, yeah, that was a tragic story, actually. Um... Yeah, and I think the police used CCTV as part of that to find out uh, what had actually happened. Right, what should we go with? Right, we've got this one, the red one. <laughs> Pig with a cigar, it's not a cigar, a flare in its mouth. A gas mask and a helmet. That's pretty historical, maybe we should go with that one. Um, yeah, super info, you are correct, sir. Oh, thank you, Jacob, that doesn't happen too often. I'm going to go... Even though this is technically speaking more historical, and I feel that this is what it should be, we're going to go with the pig mask and the, and the flare, aren't we? That's what we're going to run with. Oh, he's taking off. I guess I take it with me, do I? Um, so yeah, so those are all pretty um, into the boxing ring, eh? Oh. Those are all big changes in terms of scientific advancement, in terms of technology being used. But there's also another key aspect of how the police develop in the 20th century, and that is with re regard to something called specialisation. Uh, specialisation is um, about ha people having different specialisms. Different... Oh, hang on. I wasn't expecting this. Right. Oh, so, oh, it's training, guys. This is all very safe. All super, super safe. So, uh a guard break against a blocking enemy, so... Oh my goodness. Apparently that's breaking their guard. This is training. This is like sparring, yeah? So this is all, all, all super nice and, and kind. Um, but specialisation is... Oh, of course, there's going to be a counter. I mean, to be fair, I'm, I'm slating on some games here in terms of the fact that they all do the same thing, but... What alternative is there? I guess someone's got to come up with something very different before it gets... Uh, you know, before you start complaining, now I've got a defeater in a fight. Guard break, guard break. That doesn't look like the blood effects are off, does it, guys? What's that all about? It's not inspiringly good combat, this, but... Oh, I should just finish off, shouldn't I? Hang on, Connie, watch out. Right, there we go. Come on. <laughs> just can't, I can't even talk. And push buttons at the same time. It's embarrassing, isn't it? Oh no, don't go and hit him on the floor, mate. For sparring, I think we've gone a bit hard there, but there we go. Right, let's... <laughs> Modern Muhammad Ali. I've had that before, actually. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm very quick. No, uh, very quick-handed. Uh, when did the police start wearing uniforms? Um... The police are given a standard uniform, really, in 1829 when they're established by Robert Peel. We, we talked about that in a previous stream. When the police are established in 1829, that's when they're given a uniform. It's a big moment because up to then, people who enforced the law were just people from the community who had basically been given that job as an extra job. When people start wearing uniforms, it's an official thing. Excellent. Perfect. Fiona's just said exactly that. Thank you, Fiona. That's, that's ideal. Do you think wars like World War One, World War Two, and Cold War is one of the reasons technology has improved a lot? Um... Yes. Now, it's we've noticed this a little bit with COVID, yeah? As much of a tragedy as COVID is, in in lots of ways, we have discovered hello, hello. new ways of uh, testing people. People tend to clean their hands more. We know a lot more about how certain viruses spread. There are technological advancements made when tragedies happen. And it's the same with World War One, World War Two, and the Cold War. Good question. Um, yeah, it absolutely does. Um, so, uh, what was I talking about? Oh, specialisms. Specialisation. Now, a good way of remembering that is a specialism is something that someone is specially trained in or a special role someone fulfills. Uh, up in 1829, when the police are established, basically you have a group of people who are about to get a mission that will probably talk all the way over the top of, which is like paranoid. You should be. It's a pretty topical game, to be fair. Maybe we'll get a bit of AI combo in the, at the end. Um, 
But in terms of um, a big change in the police, you go from having people who are just members of the community who are in medieval England who are expected to enforce the law amongst themselves to in early modern England individuals from the community being given the role of enforcing the law whilst having other jobs to professional policemen in the 19th century who wear uniforms and are marked out to enforce the law. In the 20th century you start seeing people in uniforms taking on different roles and training in certain fields. Uh, a big, a big um, introduction to the police in the 1920s was female officers couldn't be a, a police officer before the 1920s that's a big shift um, but then you also see new areas of policing emerge throughout the 20th century so uh, in 1946 for example there is a designated fraud squad established uh, at the same time in the same year 1946 there's a specialist dog unit that, that's all about uh, police dogs and training dogs and using them within police work that you know you'll have seen no doubt police dogs now uh, it, the year later in 1947 uh, a policing college is established to train new recruits so that they know what they're doing instead of basically before you to learn on the job. So, pretty scary thought. Go and arrest people who are probably going to try and beat you up and are in the process of committing crime and learn as you go along. So that, that wasn't too good. So in 1947, a college is established to help with that. Um, I think I mentioned earlier that the Misuse of Drugs Act of 1971 introduces new crimes, essentially. New laws about the taking of drugs. At the same time, uh, a new unit of police officers involved, especially in the stopping of people using drugs and the tracking of drugs, is, is introduced. Uh, more recently, in 2013, actually, off the back of that, the National Crime Agency has been established um, to, tr to tackle people bringing drugs into the UK. So over time, we've gone from a really kind of broad, generic police officer who used to walk the streets with a few detectives um, who would investigate crime after they've been committed, to now having a... a all sorts of different officers doing all sorts of different jobs. Some are involved in, say, cybercrime uh, and cybersecurity. Some are involved in fraud. Some are involved in a special branch, a, a special division of the police who are particularly involved in catching threats to national security and terrorist attacks. So it's a super specialised police force now. Um, and as we touched on when we talked about the types of crime, they are now enforcing the law about types of crime that they are now expected to tackle, we've gone from laws that were basically about not robbing off people in person to a special focus on, even in some cases, what people tend to think. That's what hate crime in lots of ways is about. The police now have an interest or a job in enforcing the law. Oh, I wonder if we can drive a bus headed into the city centre. Let's find out. I doubt it. Let's find out. Oh, I can. Wicked. That's fun. I'll probably leave it in a sec because it'll be really slow. But the police, um, yeah, they, they, their remit has expanded massively. And the government's involvement in people's life has expanded massively, actually. So when you see these signs, I know it's a game and that we don't live in a police state, but it's not completely irrelevant to us. Okay, right, well, we'll leave it five then. There's a little bit of history. Uh, I'll check the comments, uh, see if there's any questions, and uh, we'll go from there. So which individual, in your opinion, has had the biggest impact on policing as a whole? Hmm, I think it would have to be... It would have to be Robert Peel, who was the Home Secretary when the police were established. Not only because he establishes the police and gives them principles along which they should run, but he also, it, you know, we didn't touch on this just in the interest of time, he really changed the legal codes in terms of... There was something called the Bloody Code in early modern England, and it basically meant that you could be executed for pretty much anything, right? If you'd stolen, if you hunted a rabbit on someone's ground and it, the, gra the, the, the land didn't belong to you, you could be hung for that. And so many things could lead to execution. And he thought that that was not helpful because he basically established, and he was right, I think, in, in saying this. He basically claimed that if you have 200 odd crimes you can be executed for, people are going to think that's ridiculous. And because people think that's ridiculous, they're not actually going to go the whole way and execute people for things they think people shouldn't be executed for. So he kind of shrinks down the legal code as well when he's Home Secretary and really reduces the amount of crimes you can be executed for. Now that's not technically speaking policing, but it obviously has a huge influence on the police's job. It makes sure that the police... Um, are enforcing the law or are trusted with enforcing the law for a smaller group or a smaller list of crimes. So, so it would have made their job much easier, even though technically speaking, the passing of a sentence, the passing of a judgment, isn't actually the police's job. It's the, the 
judge's job or the court's job or the jury's job or whatever. But we'll, we'll come on to that in a second in terms of punishment because uh, we've got a little bit to talk about in that regard. So uh, let's have a look. Any other questions? Um, would you ever plan streaming certain Call of Duty games to cover? Yes, I would. Yes, I I would actually. Um, I'm. I'll be honest, right? I'm rubbish at COD. So, I think it would not be good for me. I think I'd spend a lot of time respawning. Uh, but I absolutely would. Now, it's worth saying that this is like a, a personal YouTube uh, channel and account, so I can kind of use it, you know, within certain limits, in all honesty. How I want it, it, you know, within certain limits. I want to use it to teach history, primarily. But, um, you know, there are games, shooters, first-person shooters like COD, that um, look, this guy represents the police. Now, this is obviously not what the police looks like. But in this game, he does. So we're going to keep an eye. I can take him down. I don't want to do that. Kick him off yet. Um, police is in, police in the, officers in the UK very rarely uh, carry guns, as you'll know. And they obviously have a different uniform, so we've got to bear that in mind. But the idea is, anything I do here that he doesn't like... Oh, should we try it? I wonder if I can steal from someone. Well, I'm sorry, mate. All right, let's see what they do. We'll bump into him. We'll bump into these guys. There's no option to steal anything. I haven't got a weapon activated. Right, look, I'm, I'm going to have to assault someone. Okay, just to, just in the interest of entertainment. Uh, <laughs> in the interest of education, not entertainment, I mean. Look, Freud just looked there. So, right. What does he do? Yes, this is good. Oh, I've got my mask on now. Oh, crikey. That's... Let's get it quickly. Um, so, I'll run off with my pig mask. Pig and flare mask. Um... As you know, in real life, what would happen there with an actual police officer is they would try and arrest... I, I hope they would try and arrest me uh, and take me for further punishment, which we will come on to in a moment. Uh, right, let's have a look. Uh, I recommend Call of Duty 3. It's more friendly than the modern ones, and it's somewhat realistic. Let's show the Nazis walk under the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's what it's useful for, isn't it? Um, it can be, and sometimes you can have a good walk around historical environments. As you've probably noticed if you've followed any of the streams, that's what we're looking for. If you could walk around a historical environment, or a setting where you can talk about things happening in real time, then that, that's exactly what we want, right? I want that bike, because it looks nicer. Yeah, it is. Look at that. So we're going to talk in a moment about punishment, and that's going to be the last thing that we touch on, and I'll give a little summary of some of the key themes, because some people are sitting in an exam on Thursday, on what we've been talking about in current or recent streams, uh, and then I'll talk about what the plan is going forward for this channel. But, uh, we'll talk about punishment in a moment. Now, what I want to know, and we've got to be sensitive and sensible about this, is I want to know what people's opinion on the death penalty is, okay? Um, now, the reason I say that is because in the 20th century, the death penalty was abolished in Britain. Um, and even though I think there's a general trend publicly for people to claim or say that we've moved on in some ways from the death penalty. If you look at polling data, so when people have been polled or surveyed publicly, you know, there's a lot of people who still agree with the, with the death penalty and with its use in certain places. So, obviously, we want to be sensitive, and I don't want people kind of talking, you know, unkindly or insensitively about this. But I would be interested to know what people actually think about the concept of the death penalty, because... It is, you know, it has to be, and it would be unfair to say it is otherwise. It is an open question in some ways. Obviously, it's been settled in the UK for now. There are lots of countries in the UK that... Uh, sorry, there are lots of countries other than the UK that use the death penalty still. And, and we're going to have a little talk about that in a moment. This here, this building, has been amended. Look, it doesn't look exactly like this. This is actually, I think, where MI5 are based in real life. I mean, it looks a lot like the building that blows up in Skyfall. If you've seen Skyfall, the James Bond film. Quality film, that one. Um, yeah, that, so I'm pretty sure that's it. Uh, have a little look. Someone's explained someone's not a fan of the death penalty yet. Uh, makes sense. Uh, why is the question, okay? Um, so, absolutely good to give your conclusion and, and what you think. But I would like to know why people either agree or disagree. And you know, that's where we, we need to be sensitive in terms of how we phrase it. And in terms of the type of crime that we might think, or some people might think, warrants the death penalty. But... Um, as we just roam around, because um, I'm going to go on to that in a moment, so um, we'll have a look at that in a quick second, all right? Let's have a look at what people have said so far. Okay, a disagreement with the death penalty on the grounds that it can be a means of escape for criminals. Uh, fair argument. Don't think death penalty should be widely used, but the only case I think it could be okay if there was a murderer who'd killed a lot of people and is dangerous to be kept in prison. Okay, interesting argument, absolutely. 
Yeah, it's worth saying most arguments around the death penalty revolve around some form of reluctance. Nobody obviously wants, you know, or some people do, but very few people actually want people to be executed kind of unfairly or, or you know, happily. It's always is sort of touted as a, a reluctant punishment. But yeah, those those are fair arguments. Uh, so let's talk about it a little bit. So in terms of punishment today, if that police officer had caught me, the most serious punishment I can now receive, in 2023 at least, would be life imprisonment. They wouldn't arrest me if, and lock me up for life imprisonment for, for punching someone on the street. But that's the most serious punishment you can get. And this is all you know, a big change from the 60s. In the 1960s, what basically happens is... Um, there's a big shift away from the death penalty, the use of execution. Uh, it had been the case that executions had all been public in the 19th century. They're not. In the 20th century, they moved to being held within prisons. But there are a number of executions that take place that lots of people think are unfair. There's a guy called Derek Bentley who's killed. He has um, a number of learning disabilities. He's executed because of his involvement in the murder of a police officer when it's not he didn't actually murder the police officer. He didn't shoot the police officer, but he was involved in the crime that led to it. There's a lady called Ruth Ellis who is executed for murdering, and she she did, she was pretty open about it, she murdered her partner, but she had been experiencing some pretty serious domestic violence within that relationship. Uh, and there's also a guy called Timothy Evans who is executed for the murder of his child and his wife, and it turns out they've actually been killed by a serial killer. So the problem is with all these things is once you've executed the person, whether it's because it's a mistake in the case of Timothy Evans, whether it's because people feel it's unfair in the case of Ellis or Bentley, once it's done, it can't be fixed. The person has been executed. And in 1965, um, executions are suspended. And then officially in 1969, executions are ended altogether. Um, I think in 1999, it might be worth a fact check, officially that's when all death penalties or sentences that could lead to the death penalty are removed from the law courts in, in England. Treason kind of hung around for a bit. If you committed high treason, you could be executed, I think, up to 97. So it, there's kind of a slow progress. But if you think about where things were in medieval England, where you could basically get executed for repeatedly stealing, ultimately, if you carried on doing it, or where people might be on the house. Look, this is very relevant, because this is where, obviously, the decision-making takes place, is where Parliament sit and the laws are made in uh, Westminster. Yeah, so in terms of... Oh, I've completely lost my train of thought, seeing Big Ben there, look. Um, yeah, in terms of the, where things have gone from medieval England, there have been some really horrific forms of execution used, burning at the stake in early modern England, the heresy is a good example. Um, but in the 1960s, it ends altogether. No more execution. Um, now, there's plenty of arguments or suggestions that could be made about the fact that the general public didn't agree with the decision to end public uh, to end sorry executions um, many members of the public at the time the execution was called off disagreed massively I'm gonna head towards this mark and we'll try and do something useful uh, and even today when certain stories are reported it's really interesting to keep an eye on YouGov the polling site because if there's a really serious crime that's committed, say somebody's murdered, often like a child, if something tragic that has happened, tragic like that, sorry, has happened, often you'll see people's desire or acceptance of the use of the death penalty increase. Now that might be an example of people just wanting revenge or an idea of seeking retribution, hurting people who've hurt other people, but it is, you know, it is a reality. And if we live in a democratic society where people's opinions on certain things are taken into account, then it can't be, you know, fully ignored. It's just worth saying that the majority of people, or the people who are willing to use the death penalty in certain circumstances, kind of hovers around the 50% mark, which is worth flagging up, all right? So we'll head over to this marker. I'll keep an eye on questions, because that's a pretty big topic, the death penalty. And then I'll talk about some alternative forms of punishment, and then we'll be wrapping up here pretty quickly, actually. So let's see, let's see. Um... We've got kind of a semi-acceptance of the death penalty. Some people do deserve the death penalty if they've killed a certain amount of people. Um, yep, got to think about the victims and their relatives, absolutely. Um, long, enjoyable prison sentences are more advisable. It's active punishment. Yeah, we'll talk about prison because when the death penalty is removed, the kind of way it's presented to those who want to keep the death penalty is that, oh, well, life imprisonment will replace it and that'll be worse. But there have been a lot of changes in terms of what prison involves. Uh, we talked about in the 18th and 19th centuries the fact that prison pe prisoners were kept separate, they had to, to operate in silence and complete manual labour. That's kind of stopped. Um, 
Death Penalty UK, yeah, 98, right in between the two years I gave, yeah. Um, yeah, it, I think it is. It, it's definitely late 90s that officially the death penalty for all crimes was removed. I think it was something to do with EU law and the fact that EU law was introduced stopping it. Um, Fiona is Google. Absolutely, I agree. <laughs> um, oh, crikey. Too <laughs> Watch out. So, yeah, let's talk about prisons. So, prisons have changed quite dramatically. Um... I mean, in 1902, so the start of the 20th century, you can't use hard labour anymore. People aren't allowed to be put on wooden planks to sleep on. They're not allowed to be completed in long, boring, menial tasks that have no end point, like smashing up rocks or passing cannonballs between themselves. Um, there is also... Um oh, I, I did write something down. Hang on, where is it? Yeah, they end the separate system, so the keeping of keeping criminals separate so they can't talk to each other in 1922 um, and increasingly educational opportunities are, in, are offered to prisoners it's now possible actually for prisoners to complete degrees in prison university level courses uh, and the idea is coming on to why what is the point of punishment in the first place the idea is if you give people in prison the opportunity to change their behavior then they might just do it like if you execute someone and you just end their life then you can't improve anyone Nowadays, the heavy focus in terms of punishment is all about... Let's get off this bike. Get off, mate. The heavy focus of, of uh, punishment nowadays, you know, is about rehabilitation. The idea of giving people the chance to change their behaviour. Um, we've, we've seen a slow, steady stream of that through this stream. It started in large part by... Oh, restricted. Oh, I'm going to have to be stealthy. I can't do that, can I? Because I've already demonstrated I can't even open up a safe whilst talking. And we're trying to keep these within an hour, so we have to go back to that yeah, another time. Um, so th there are all sorts of changes. Transportation, when people shipped off to America or Australia, started the trend of giving people a second chance to change their behaviour. And prison is all about that now, OK? Unless someone's being left in prison for their entire life... What is that? Uh, then... The idea is, at least, that they will um, change their behaviour and then they won't be involved in criminal activity going forward, OK? Uh, it's not just prison, though. If someone commits a crime now, there's all sorts of punishments people can receive. Some people will be given community service. They've got to go and paint somewhere or pick up litter, depending on the crime. Some people will be given fines, you know, if you're speeding. You'll be fine. You'll have, you'll have some points put on your licence. Um, there's also uh, something called restorative justice, often used with young people, where... If someone, say, steals from uh, an old lady, and the old lady doesn't want to press charges but wants something done, then the young person might be asked to engage with the old lady, maybe write them a letter, maybe do something nice for them. Um, now, it's weird saying lots of these things, they, they do sound very positive. It's in the air whether they're actually having an impact on reoffending rates. Uh, and reoffending rates is a key indicator here. Uh, there used to be a system called Borstals for young men who were involved in crime where young men would be sent to ball stalls and have to do all sorts of physical labour and all sorts of educational stuff. And it was horrible. It was kind of like prison for young men, but it wasn't as strict. Reoffending rates, I think, in, in like the early half, first half of the 20th century, was like 30% for that group of people. Now it's like 60%, meaning that those involved in the criminal justice system who went to ball stalls were, more, were less likely to come out and commit more crime than they seemingly are now. So that's worth flagging up in terms of this discussion, what actually works, not just how we feel about it, what actually works in terms of stopping crime. Um, but that's basically, yeah, you've got community service, there's restorative justice, people sometimes will have a tag, so instead of sending some people to prison, they'll have a tag on their ankle, they've got to be in a certain place at a certain time. And then you've also got like probation officers. They were introduced actually really early, I think like 1907 in the 20th century, but their role has increased, so now people who come out of prison are given support and help in coming out into the community to avoid them going back into prison. Whether these things are working in terms of stopping crime depends on how you break down crime stats, it depends on a load of things, but there have definitely been some changes. When you think about the fact that in medieval England, punishment was all about catching a small, you know, whoever you could, and mutilating them, chopping off hands, whipping them publicly, making them look like fools, and potentially executing them in front of a group of people, to people being given another chance in prison or at home with an electronic tag, given the chance to talk to their victims. You know, there's been some pretty big shifts there, haven't there? So, I'm going to have a quick scan in the comments, and, uh, yeah, we're nearly done. We're going to chop this off in a second. So, uh, the film uh, is good viewing. If that's by Derek Bentley, yeah, it is. It's worth a watch. It's free on YouTube if you want to watch it. It's called Let Him Have It.
Yeah, it's alright. The issue with prison is that it will need to have some good hygiene for the prisoner, so the pain is not as high, so it might actually give someone a better life. Yeah, absolutely. Conditions in prisons have improved dramatically from what they were. Yeah, prisons are pretty well looked after now. I usually think it's disgusting to use something like the separate systems. It can literally drive people to insanity, which it did. A number of people in prisons in the 19th century took their own lives as a result of being forced into uh, a separate system where they couldn't speak to people for months or years at a time. Yeah, it's horrible. Um, but after someone's committed a serious crime like murder, I don't think it'd be too much of a difference. Yeah, <laughs> drove straight into that memorial. Oops. Um, yeah, worth. Um, yeah, that's a very fair point, Fiona. So as we kind of drive past Westminster for another angle here, oh, is this? Uh, oh no. Um, is that the Abbey? Is that where the coronation happened? I don't even know my geography of London that well. Look, we've got some. Uh, remember democracy, guys. Some protesters. You know, protest is a good sign of democracy. If people can protest. Generally, there's some level of democracy there and some general sense of free speech. If you think about Nazi Germany and the lack of protest, it's not because people like living under the Nazis, surprise, surprise. It was because they didn't or they didn't have the access to protest. They didn't have the ability to kind of raise their concerns. So we've gone on longer here than I expected, probably because we've done a bit of summarising as well. We've gone on an hour. We're going to chop this off. Um, as always, please make sure, very important, very, very important, that you like this video. That's so important, guys. And it's very important that you share this with everyone, so everybody knows what we're up to. Um, the plan going forward with regard to this channel is to use it for teaching history. This is not the final live stream I'll be doing. It's just the final live stream of this series on crime and punishment. Because the, the exam, for those who are sitting it, is on Thursday. So if you're sitting exams at the moment, good luck. Um, yeah, we are praying for people who are doing exams at the moment. It can be a stressful time and we want people to do well and to feel relaxed. It's not, oh, there's the Abbey, or Westminster Cathedral, or whatever it is, where it all happened the other day, I believe, in terms of Charles' coronation. Um, yeah, so good luck to those sitting exams. Um, going forward, I'll be probably playing some different games. I've got some ideas of things I can do with friends in terms of keeping it super chilled and enjoyable so that it's not a job, obviously, because it's not, uh, but also is somewhat useful things that I can use in lessons and for teaching. So um, there will be, what I'm thinking going forward is I'll probably stream every Thursday is the plan. That's the plan, okay? So on Thursdays I'll be streaming. Um, I'll probably put a post up on YouTube. But I will also be making videos alongside that about various topics of things that I'm going to be teaching on. So um, keep an eye out. Hit the bell. That's it, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I always forget. You've got to hit the bell. Because if you don't hit the bell, you won't know when something's coming up. And if you don't know something's coming up, I'm not going to get any views. And if I don't get any views... I'm not going to get towards my plaques, guys, which I've been finding out about this week. Plaques. Uh, but I've just clocked uh, the time, so even though I'd offered a good explanation of what Brazy meant, I'm afraid, guys, we're going to have to wait. I'll have to tell you what Brazy means next time. So uh, on Thursday, there'll be a stream. I'll explain what Brazy means. It's going to blow your mind. I think the term Brazy has its roots in Shakespeare, and I'm going to explain to you what I mean by that on Thursday. So make sure you tune in. Uh, have a good evening. And uh, for those of you who, who've stuck it through loyally to the end, I appreciate it. Hopefully uh, we've learned something along the way. I'm going to parallel park in here. Oh, oh, so close. That was better than my usual parking. And we're going to leave it there. Right. Have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye-bye.